southern Morocco. Farming these dry lands on the edge of the Sahara has never been easy, but years of drought have made it next to impossible. It's a problem which is not just confined to North Africa. In many parts of the world, especially arid regions, once productive farmland is turning into wasteland. Desertification now affects one third of the world's surface and has an impact on the lives of a fifth of the world's population. Africa is most at risk, with two thirds of its landmass desert or drylands. There are many reasons for the spread of these new desert like areas. Climate change is an important factor, temperatures are rising, and rainfall decreasing or becoming more erratic. Too many people on the land is another. Underground water supplies are being pumped out quicker than rainfall can refill them, such as here in India. The demand for water in many arid countries is outstripping supply and will lead to severe water shortages in coming decades. It's not just underground water either. Rivers like the Rio Grande on the Mexican-US border provide essential irrigation water. But so much water is extracted by farmers of both countries that the Rio Grande has become in many places just a trickle. More people can mean more livestock than the land can cope with. Here in China, on the borders of the Gobi Desert, large flocks of sheep and goats are eating on the already sparse vegetation. On the world's dry lands, grasses, shrubs and trees are the last line of defense. When they are lost, topsoils just blow away. This image taken from a NASA satellite shows millions of tons of topsoil blown in a giant dust storm from Africa out across the Atlantic, an estimated 13 million tons each year. The destructive effects of desertification has given natural deserts a bad name. Many people talk about the destructive impacts of desertification, of these deserts encroaching on, on one's arable lands. But equally important is, is deserts themselves as ecosystems, what they can offer in the future in terms of services, how they can help their own communities develop with their resources, with their very special ecosystems. According to Global Deserts Outlook, a new report from the United Nations Environment Programme, released today in Algiers to mark World Environment Day, the world's existing natural deserts are not barren wastelands, but vital ecosystems offering many benefits. Desert plants adapted to the harsh environment could be an important source of new crops and chemical compounds for medicines and industrial products. Wild plants are currently responsible for a quarter of today's medicines, while the US National Cancer Institute has identified 3,000 plants that are active against cancer cells. Meanwhile, some experts believe deserts, with their abundance of sunlight, could become the carbon-free powerhouses of the 21st century. Europe's Centre for Solar Energy Research and Development is in the Spanish desert region of Almeria. Scientists argue that a desert area of just 800 square kilometres could capture enough solar energy to generate all the world's electricity needs and more. Deserts are also ideal sites for wind energy. This wind farm in northern Morocco is the largest in Africa. Its 84 wind turbines provide 2% of Morocco's annual electricity needs, saving annual carbon emissions of 230,000 tonnes a year. Surprisingly, deserts can support agriculture without using vast quantities of irrigation water. In Israel's Negev desert, Farmers are beginning to see the benefits of planting desert crops like these prickly pears instead of water-intensive citrus orchards. The fruit of the prickly pear is popular in many parts of the world, in Mexico and in Spain, for example, where it is known as las tunas. Even the leaves can be eaten or used as cattle feed once the sharp spines are removed. Such ventures offer new and potentially environmentally friendly livelihoods for local people and businesses. Deserts are incredibly important because they occupy uh, somewhere uh, between 15 and 25 percent of, of the world's land area and are home to up to 500 million people, providing them with their daily goods and services the, upon which they, they depend.
and their importance is, is really underlined because, because they are under threat. They're under threat from global uh, pressures such as climate change and under threat from more local pressures like unsustainable development and agriculture. So it's a double-pronged attack on what are fairly fragile ecosystems. In the United Arab Emirates, endangered desert species such as the Hubara bustard, the favorite prey of Arab falconers, the Arabian leopard and the oryx were almost extinct before a tree planting project stabilized the landscape and a wildlife breeding center was launched to restock rare creatures. Traditional knowledge may provide some answers to how we can live in dry lands without destroying them. These Syrian farmers have spent months restoring their canat or water tunnel. Without the water it supplies, they would have to leave their village. The technology is thousands of years old, and yet unlike modern pumps, is sustainable. Using only gravity, canats never drain more water than can be replaced by rainfall. UNEP's report contains a powerful message. Desertification is a serious threat, and yet deserts could be full of benefits for humankind if we can learn to manage them better. UNEP is focusing on deserts with the Global Deserts Outlook because we found that there wasn't one place where all of the great information on deserts about the threats that they are under and about the opportunities that they present has been brought together. So for the first time we've managed to bring together all of the information and of course it's tied with promoting deserts and linking it to the International Year of Deserts.